post in one of my coloring groups and it said, does anyone take out their pages out of their coloring books and how do they do it? So I commented back and I said that I do and that I use an iron. I had a few replies asking me how I used an iron and if glue got everywhere and so I figured I would do a video on how I use the iron. There's some other things I'm gonna show you as well and I feel that this is the safest way because I've tried many different things. I've tried taking my X-Acto knife and just cutting it out, but it ends up tearing things. And also with a book like this, it has a perforation and I've tried just taking it out with a perforation, but I end up tearing the page. So I feel that it's best to just take off the glue, melt the glue and then take the pages out. Um, I have an example, this is one that I've taken things out, and the perforation is right here. Sometimes I feel like it's too close to the picture, so you can either leave the perforation alone or you can take it out, it's up to you. So I also use an X-Acto knife because some of the books are tied in. Um, you're gonna want to cut the strings and melt the glue. I think Joanna Bassford's books are like that. So what I'm gonna do is on the iron, you're gonna start with silk. Irons are different. So you're going to try to do it at silk and if it doesn't melt the glue, then you're gonna slowly go down to cotton like I did. So you're going to use a, an old towel to put it on top of the book. I also have this thick towel because sometimes I like to sit on the couch and just do it on my lap so I don't burn myself I use a thick towel. So you're gonna start at the front and on the binding. And you usually hold the iron for about a minute. Another question that I saw was what do, what do you do if a page is wrinkled? You're going to want to use it on low to medium setting and you're going to put a thin towel over your page and you're going to iron it out. Sometimes you can move it back and forth or you can keep it still. quickly so that the melt that the glue doesn't melt down look see how the glue is separating right there actually the book is coming apart right now Go down as far as you can. If you see it's starting to rip the book, then that means you're gonna wanna melt the glue again. This is as far as I can go. Okay, what happened was the glue made the first page stick. I'm slowly gonna pull it away. Hoping it doesn't tear. I'm gonna use the X-Acto knife to cut the glue. And ran my hand underneath. See, this is this is the last page. It's okay to go ahead and slowly take the perforation off. Oh, it's the last page. And um, so what I usually do is I usually cut right here and right here on the binding. And then I take the front and the back um, of the book and I put them into a page protector. 
So what you can do is um, you go ahead and you take the pages apart. And if the pages don't come apart like this, don't rush it because it might tear. But if it doesn't come apart slowly like this, you can put the towel over the glue part and iron it again and it will loosen up for you. Okay, so that's how you do the book. And then it's up to you whether or not you wanna do the perforation. So each page, if you wanna do the perforation, go ahead and do one at a time. Don't do more than one. And then you can um, bit, um, fold it like that and then go ahead and take the perforation off. Sometimes I'd rather keep the perforation on because sometimes the perforation goes right on the black line and I don't like that. So um, go ahead and you take each page. I usually put this page inside here like that and then I put this into a page protector and then you put each of these pages in a page protector. Now if you have a bigger book than eight and a half by 11 like this book, I usually get page protectors off of Amazon that are 12 by 12 and then I'll go ahead and put it in. Now let me see if I can find Okay, if you have pages like this and they're separated, I usually scan them in after I get done coloring and then I use a photo, like Photoshop or a photo app and then I put them together so it looks like one. And another example of a 12 by 12, I get an album and it's 12 by 12 and it's not too expensive. I think I pay $10 for this. And this is Joanna Basford. I think her pages were sewn in. So I put them all in here and there wasn't enough pages, the page protectors inside the book for it. So I went ahead and got more page protectors off of Amazon, the 12 by 12. And you can take the album apart. Right here they have like screws. You take the album apart and then you put more page protectors in and then you can fit the book. Now another thing that I do is I scan in the pages. These are too big for my printer so there is a place, a copy place like FedEx and they'll scan in your pages. The place that I went to it was only three dollars to scan anything in and it didn't matter how many pages I had. So I had a copy and um, I went ahead and colored it and then I put it on top since I can't put it in my binder that I put all my pages in. These are the page protectors I use. I get these from Sam's. I believe it's around $10 for 250 They're pretty thick too. They're not the thin ones that you get from the dollar store. And then what I do is I have a binders and it's all based on subject. Like this one is my animal binder and it's a duo. It has two three, um, three ring binders things. And then what I do is this is my coloring book and I separate them by subject dividers for each book. And then I also have a regular binder. I have some of these. And then I have a regular binder that I also use. This is my seasons. And I have my calendar that you can color in. And then these are my Halloween, autumn, and Christmas. I need to get more seasons because I don't have Easter or summer. I go ahead and put it in a regular binder with the sheet protectors and I keep all my colorings together. And then I have another divider where my unfinished pages right here, I need to finish them. So if you have any questions, please feel free to PM me, private message me. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.